This may sound crazy, but it's been a lifelong dream to be a backup game show host. And now with Gino not here, it is my time to announce a little game called From the Slot with Brian Hayes and Craig Button. And here's how it works. I will throw out a question, and then we're going to uh, hit the slot machine. You'll hear a little sound, and you guys have to pick your answer. So there's a gently used crockpot at stake here. So guys, be brilliant. Here we go. To keep this fair, only I know what's coming. Let's get it started with this, with Patrick Kane back in the NHL in Detroit. Will this experience be, Brian Hayes, a positive one or a negative one? I hate to be the bearer of bad news here, Rod. I'm going to say negative in terms of what Patrick Kane is personally going to bring to the table. The Detroit Red Wings have been a huge positive this season, the way that they've been playing. They're in a playoff position. Patrick Kane obviously is there to augment that. But major, major surgery. There have been a few guys in past history that have had the same surgery. None of them have got back anywhere close to the former form they had. He's a great player. He's a future Hall of Famer. But I think the rest of this season is still going to be negative in terms of what Kane brings to the table. Positive, Rod, because you got to realize what the expectations are for Patrick Kane. The expectations aren't for him to be the superstar that Brian just outlined. It's about bringing in the hand skills, the brain skills, the vision, being really good on the power play. He hasn't lost any of that. Playing on the wing, he's not going to have to skate as much. Derek Lalonde can put him in the spots. The salary reflects that. And what Patrick Kane brings to the Detroit Red Wings is just more than is on ice. I think as long as you keep the expectations realistic, it'll be positive for the Detroit Red Wings and Patrick Kane. Okay, so these two contestants disagreeing right away as we go into question two. Which Canadian team sniper is most likely to win the Rocket Richard Trophy? And here are your nominees. Austin Matthews. Brock Besser or Kyle Connor? Craig? Austin Matthews is the best goal scorer in the National Hockey League. I am not betting against Austin Matthews. Everything that goes with goal scoring, Matthews is at the top of the list. Slot shots, inner slot shots, four check chances, cycle chances, rebounds, everything that requires you to be the top goal scorer. He excels in that area. Just a matter of time before he's leading the league in goal scoring. He's not that far off. Never betting against Austin Matthews. Yeah, this one's going to be a wash for us, Rod. Uh, I'm going with Austin Matthews on this as well. The other two great goal scorers. Besser's had a resurgence. Mm -hmm. Besser has kind of personified what the Vancouver Canucks have represented this year. But I don't see him touching up against 50 goals. I'm not sure he gets to 40, 45. Connor will get to 40. Connor likely will get to 50. That wouldn't shock me. But everything Craig just said about Austin Matthews is accurate. He's been the best pure goal scorer in the league for years now. Last year was a step back, but he got the contract. He's off to a great start statistically. His play has even been shoddy, and he's still got all those goals. When he gets rocking, and I believe that is just a matter of time, I think he wins the Rocket this year. And going with the guy that has won this award twice before, okay, item three. Which player has been the biggest disappointment so far? Is it Johnny Gaudreau, Jonathan Huberdeau, or is it Alex Ovechkin, Brian? I'm going to go with Alex Ovechkin. And the reason I'm going to say that is because of what is at stake for Alex Ovechkin. He's older than both those guys. Those two should still be in their prime. No one is expecting Ovechkin to still be in his prime. But he's chasing the biggest record in the sport right now in terms of Wayne Gretzky and the goals. He's got five on the season. He's still playing. He's still healthy. He's still putting a lot of shots on net. I think more goals will come. But five this late into the season for Alex Ovechkin, I'm going to go with the grade eight down in D.C. Yeah, I, I have a tough time not saying all of the above. So <laughs> I'm going to have to pick one. I am going to say Jonathan Huberto. As hard as Jonathan Huberto is working, the effort is there. The game is off. And you, you can see it when you watch him play. He looks hesitant. He looks like he's a half second behind the decision he wants to make. Half a second in this league is like an hour because the game is played so fast and at such a rapid pace. And right now, Jonathan Huberto just is missing. He's missing by that half a second. And at the National League level, when you miss by half a second, you're missing by a lot. Jonathan Huberto, a $10.5 million contract just starting this year, is missing a lot. The biggest disappointment to this point. It's interesting, though. Ovechkin, though, looked like a rubber stamp to catch Gretzky. And at this pace right now, I'm sure it'll improve. But it's uh, maybe a bit more of a question mark to get to 892. Okay, item number four. You're going to start this one, Craig. Who is your favorite to win the Norris Trophy? 
And here are your choices. Will it be Kale McCarr? Will it be Quinn Hughes? <laughs> wow. You know, I can't go wrong picking either one of them because they're the two best defensemen in the league. And, you know, the way Quinn Hughes is playing, but I'm sorry, Quinn, as much as I love you, I'm not going against Kale McCarr. Kale McCarr does things just at a little bit higher level than Quinn Hughes. And we're talking about superstars. We're talking about two players that absolutely impact the game. I'm going with Kale McCarr, though. Yeah, you can't go wrong with either choice here. Like Craig said, these are the two best defensemen in the league. I do think there's a 1A and 1B, and that 1A is Kale McCarr. <laughs> McCarr is the best defenseman in the world. But I'm going to answer this by saying Quinn Hughes because awards like this generally, they're not based on who was the best player every single day. It's a collective of who had the best season, who had the best story. A lot of it is driven by narrative, and Quinn Hughes is driving that narrative out in Vancouver, right? No one's surprised Kale McCarr is doing what he's doing. Hughes has elevated his game that much more. There is surprise that Vancouver is doing what they're doing. Just anointed captain, Canadian city. Vancouver's been a really positive story. If they keep rocking in the Pacific and he touches up on 100 points, I'm not sure it matters what McCarr does. I think Quinn Hughes will end up winning the Norris. Okay, we got a close one here. It comes down to the final question. And, Hayes, you're going to start this one. Is the addition of Jacques Martin good or bad news for Sen's head coach, DJ Smith. I think it's good news because he's not going to take over behind the bench. Like, I don't believe he's in a position in his life, his age, where he's coming in with the expectation that if DJ gets pushed out, Jacques Martin is going to move in. He is there as a consultant right now, and it's needed. Like, DJ Smith, he could use some help right now. The Ottawa Senators have been very disappointing. There's a lot of people that are turning on DJ Smith. So, Martin, if he was younger, I might have a different answer for you, but I don't think he's in a position where he wants to get back behind the bench every single day, so I will say it's a good thing. Yeah, good thing. And, and here's the dilemma right now, Brian. I do not know how we're going to share the slightly used crock pot because it means <laughs> that we're going to finish tied in this game show segment. <laughs> because when you look at Jacques Martin, what he brings to the Ottawa Senators, I think it's exactly what DJ and the coaching staff need. And Jacques Martin talked about being consistent in your defensive play. I think there has been improvement in their defensive play, but there's still inconsistency in their defensive play. And I think that that's important for this team to move forward. I think Jacques can be a really good resource. That is something the Ottawa Senators have lacked under the previous ownership. They were, they were, they were threadbare in terms of help and assistance and mentorship. I think this is really important for DJ and the Ottawa Senators. And I think Daniel Alfredson had a big say in this. Well, Button, I want to tell you, you were great, but we've heard from our judges, and I'm sorry to say, well, maybe you'd be happy to hear this. The winner is Hayes of that gently used crockpot, only because I got it out in my truck in the back, and I'm dying to get it off my hands. This was fun. Another edition filling in for Gino Retta from the slot with Craig Button and Brian Hayes. Thank you, guys.